Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey Houston, we've got no problems here. Today we want to talk some more about uh, soil, really building up to soil erosion. We learned about what soil was in the last segment. But now what we know is we want to talk about what controls the formation of soil. So we've talked about the types of soil, but how is it actually formed? And it comes down to some interesting concepts of uh, these five topics, uh, six topics, whatever it's five. Parent material it comes from, how much time it takes, what climate it's in, how the plants and animals interact with the soil, and the topography. That's like with you know, elevations and stuff like that. So let's look at one at a time. Parent material. So what the soil comes from makes a difference, right? It's what is the rocks that it came from, at least from the geologic perspective, is if it came from granites or it came from feldspars. And remember, we talked about how that happens in different regions of the earth and there's chemical breakdown and weathering. So weathering relates to creating soil. So the parent material makes a difference. And then it's transported. So if you have some soil, there's both rocks that are breaking down and there's also some dirt or soil that's coming from somewhere else and it's being transported usually by water to get it there and then you get the mix of the soils happening in that particular location so here is a, a good example here uh, from our textbook right here is that we've got the soil in the valley right here and this is coming from the parent materials that were already present here as it was breaking down but also some of it's being transported from wherever it's coming from through this river and that makes a huge uh, thing. Now, an important thing to understand is you don't really get soil formation on the steeps of mountains because it needs to sit and like cook, so to speak. So it's going to happen. Soil formation is almost always happening in valleys, in the low spots, etc, etc. So here we've got thick soil, but this thick soil can run down here and add to this soil. But it's going to be thin here because it's a slope, right? We're talking about this. And interestingly enough, you probably know, this is where you grow the best crops, in the bottomlands, right? So that's where the best soil is the best. Right, so the parent material matters. The second one, of course, is time. Is, uh, for all intents and purposes, all soils are eroding. They're moving and they're being used up in our, in our growing of our plants or just in the growing of a tree or something like this. But so how long that's there makes a difference. So if you find a soil that's young versus a soil that's old, they're going to have different things. Now, if they're continually being uh, replenished by uh, other places, then that can make a huge, huge difference. And as you're like these two pictures, classic here, I have a picture from um, a tropical rainforest and obviously the desert is the climate's going to make a difference. If you are in a warm, moist place, i.e. Houston, um, you're going to get a lot more sort of organic matter because the organic matter makes the difference than you're going to get here. Um, I know they can have oases that can grow in the desert, but uh, things don't grow where well because you don't have enough organic matter. Uh, and certainly not enough moisture. So the climate's going to also affect the soil formation. And then also the plants themselves. So here we have some sort of a forest. Here we have obviously a desert. And even the nature of the plants and how they break down in the climate that they're in will make a huge difference in terms of what types of soil and what types of plants can survive in that soil will matter. I mean, so I mean, you might have an interesting question. What if I were to take the soil from the desert, okay, where it's dry, and put that same soil here, would the tree grow? Probably not. Even though now I've got more rain, I've got, uh, it's moisture, different temperature, whatever, you would think that it would work, and not really, because actually the interesting thing is, is that certain types of plants prefer certain types of soils, and that's what you find in um, the different climates of the world. And then lastly, the slope and the topography. I've really alluded to this. You don't get soil on the big steeps of the cliffs. You get it only down here in the bottom, okay? And here's like the bottom lands and it's flat, flat places where you're gonna have the thick soil forming. Doesn't mean there couldn't be like thick soil at the top of this right here, it's flat right here, but uh, probably not. Uh, but this is a desert climate of some kind, it looks like to me. So guys, uh, the last thing on, on soil is that soil, remember, is an interface, right? It's got all the four spheres. And then where it ma is made and where it come from and, you know, the steepness of the slope make a difference in the soil formation. Next up, what we're going to do is talk about how does soil erode? Because the whole point of this is weathering, erosion, and 
and something called mass wasting. That's where we're headed. But how does the world break down on the top? We'll see you in class.